Hi guys, it's Geekonomics here this afternoon. This video is for the benefit primarily of my students who missed my lesson today. However, I hope that it will be of a great deal of use to those of you who are studying A2 macroeconomics and perhaps just coming to the culmination of your studies of the Keynesian view versus the classical view, particularly with regard to increasing output, reducing unemployment and the relationship between those two variables and inflation. I have been reading with my students a few excerpts from this. This is an absolute gem, ladies and gentlemen. This is the 1976 Nobel Lecture, no less, as delivered by Milton Friedman. And as you can see from the title, it is all to do with inflation and unemployment. Those of you who've been following my previous couple of videos, you will know that Friedman stressed particularly the link between unemployment, wages and prices, and can be illustrated by this particular diagram, where we have the what we would call the traditional trade-off, the Phillips curve trade-off here between inflation and unemployment, and we've got a few short-run Phillips curves here. So when Friedman was writing, he looked at the data for inflation and unemployment for a few quinquennia, ladies and gentlemen, so between a few five-year periods. And in the late 50s, early 1960s, so that's 1950s, 1960s, he observed a pattern, and the pattern was that either inflation was rising and unemployment was falling, or inflation was falling and unemployment was rising. Indeed, the empirical evidence in his Nobel lecture suggests that this short-run relationship between inflation and unemployment did actually exist. However, moving on a couple of decades and comparing data in a couple of quinquennia closer to 19, late 1960s, early 1970s, there seemed to be two things happening. Number one, a breakdown in this simple relationship between inflation and unemployment. So we observed times when inflation was high and unemployment was high as well. What we refer to in economics, as you know, as stagflation, rising inflation and rising unemployment. And so some people then started to say, well, actually, maybe this relationship hasn't broken down. Maybe the Phillips curve is just shifting upwards and outwards. And so that would maybe explain it. However, move on further, and even that relationship seemed to be breaking down. And this then led Friedman to come up with this theory, which is the natural rate theory, otherwise known as the accelerationist theory, otherwise known as my uh, personal preference here, the expectations Mrs. adjusted the English department. Theory. Please contact reception. Sorry about Thank this, you. Hanoi, ladies and gentlemen the expectations adjusted theory. And indeed, Prime Minister Callaghan, Labour Prime Minister in the 1970s, uh, quoted in a very famous speech in 1976 and said that any attempts by the government to stimulate economic growth, be that through increased government spending or reduction in taxes, all that did in the long term was simply lead to higher and higher rates of Would inflation please contact extension and we can use this model to explain why that's the case so if we start at point a and if we say okay let's try and reduce unemployment the short run phillips curve relationship suggests that we would move to b so we've got lower unemployment and we've got higher rates of inflation however friedman said that people would adjust their expectations instantaneously and so they would realise at point B that prices have gone up. They would ask for wage rises. We've talked about this in previous videos in order to maintain their real wage. And so rather than ending up at B, this stimulus into the economy would simply mean that we would end up at point C, where we would have higher rates of inflation and no change in the level of real output. If we tried to do it once again to D, we wouldn't end up at D, we'd end up at E. 
And these points, as you'll know, are referred to as the NIRU, points of non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. If we're to the left of this line, we are experiencing in upside inflationary pressures, and to the right it would be downside inflationary pressures. And as you'll be aware, if we join these three points together, we are getting a perfectly inelastic curve. And so Friedman said that actually in the long run, the, the LRPC, the long run Phillips curve, is perfectly inelastic. Because, as it says here, any attempt by the government to stimulate economic growth simply leads to higher and higher levels of inflation with no change in real output, which stays, ladies and gentlemen, at the natural Taylor rate. Cochran, please go to the drama studio. Thank you. I do apologise for these tannoys, ladies and gents. So, that is the Friedman. That's a very quick and very brief summary of his Nobel lecture. Um, this, ladies and gentlemen, is produced by the Institute of Economic Affairs, and you can uh, write to them and get copies of this. It's tip-top. I thoroughly recommend it to you as part of your wider reading and literacy. So I was then saying to my class, so what would change this natural rate of unemployment level of output? Well, if you had more women in the workplace, as has been more predominant and you know, as you through the 80s, 90s, noughties and so on, generally speaking we've got both parents working so that would reduce the natural rate of unemployment. Um, if we had very generous welfare payments in this country, and we'll not get into whether they are or not, but if we did have then that would obviously encourage people to stay unemployed and so it would increase the natural rate. Um, if we had very generous unemployment insurance, as Friedman was writing in the 1950s, uh, was the case in America, and so that did increase um, the natural rate of unemployment. So that, ladies and gentlemen, in a nutshell, that is the expectations adjusted classical theory with regard to inflation and unemployment. Now, if you get an essay, let's say, potentially you might get an essay, which asks you to discuss whether increasing the money supply would increase the level of real output and reduce unemployment. And this would be a great opportunity to compare and contrast Keynesian economics with classical economics. So I'm just going to move the camera along, ladies and gentlemen. Bear with me on this. Hopefully we'll be in the, in the right zone. Okay. Now, I hope you can read this, ladies and gentlemen. So I've written a potential essay question here. Discuss whether an increase in the money supply always leads to economic growth, 25 marks. And if you were using your traditional Keynesian theory on this, you could talk about the fact that the increase in the money supply in the money market would reduce the interest rates, would stimulate investment, shift aggregate demand to the right, via the transmission mechanism, which we've talked about before, the way in which changes in the money market feed into the real economy. So Keynes is saying here, increasing the money supply can give you growth, it can reduce unemployment. Yes, there will be upside inflationary pressures, but at least you're experiencing growth at the same time as you move from B to C here. We've got the trade-off, as you well know, this Phillips curve. However, you then could contrast this, ladies and gentlemen, with what we've just talked about on the previous board, with regard to the classical case, or the, the Milton Friedman case, and say, well, actually, Friedman would argue the opposite, because Friedman and the classical economists would say, no, this isn't the case. They would say that by doing this, increasing the money supply, all you're going to do is stoke up inflation, and you'll not be able to move from Y1 to Y2 to Y3. And we can furthermore reinforce this, ladies and gentlemen, with the quantity theory of money with regard to inflation. As you'll know, the quantity theory of money, MV equals PT. I'm not sure you can see that. Yes, we can. There it is. MV equals PT. And the, the general gist, ladies and gentlemen, of this theory is, of course, that V and T are assumed to be constant, so if both sides of this equation are equal, that would mean that if you doubled the money supply, you'd be doubling the price level in effect, with no impact on real output. And that really is essentially what Friedman is arguing in his Nobel uh, lecture. He is saying that if you try 
to stimulate the economy in order to reduce unemployment and you were to do this via the money supply for example all you're going to generate is higher and higher levels of inflation so this ties in very nicely with our expectations adjusted theory of inflation and unemployment moving on and sort of further evaluating that today think about what we've got in the UK economy with regard to quantitative easing and that relationship with inflation you'll know that CPI is 1.2 percent at the moment yet we have 435 billion additional QE into the economy with an additional 10 billion of corporate bonds Joseph into the economy. Leone, please come to reception. Thank so that's you. 445 billion additional into the, the, the money supply effectively in the UK economy. Has that stoked up inflation? No, it has not, ladies and gentlemen. So moving on to modern day, we can see that this theory of MV equals PT is, seems to be breaking down, not just in the UK, but around the globe. So, that's it ladies and gentlemen. I hope that's not been too much too quickly, um, but uh, I hope it's been useful for you. So that's it for this week. It's been quite a productive week this week in terms of videos. So bye for now.